Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye. Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church, Johannesburg, South Africa. They are passionate about building families and raising men and women who transform and uplift the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation. Some of their programs include Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Dream Achievers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps and Limitless Men Seminars. They are the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women, and host the annual Power of Women Conferences and Amazing Power of Women Broadcasts. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. And welcome to another episode of the Amazing Power of Women broadcast. It's another Thursday evening and we are here for another episode of the Amazing Power of Women. This broadcast is born out of this book, The Amazing Power of Women, written by Pastor Chooks. And today he will be taking the part two of unpacking the theme of our conference, um, The God Sufficient Woman. Last month, we had our conference, What a Powerful, Powerful Time in the Presence of God with Other Ladies. Um, if you really want to know, if you haven't watched or have, you are not part of the conference, it's available, the whole stream is available on our YouTube channel. Be sure to go um, understand and listen to that, um, um, about listen to the conference. And today, he will be taking that theme further by unpacking it and just speaking about what it means to be a God-sufficient woman. Just stay tuned. He will be on shortly. Welcome uh, one more time to tonight's uh, episode of the Amazing Power Woman broadcast. A big thank you to my dear wife for uh, opening us up today and, and just getting the program running. Well, tonight's broadcast is part two of the God Sufficient Woman Unpacked. Uh, we, we started last week to unpack the theme for our 2022 Power of Woman conference, the God Sufficient Woman. And we did part one last week. If you missed it, I would like to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and find that message and listen to it. Okay, we, we, we laid some foundation last week. Let me do a quick recap. We said there are five types of women in the world. Uh, the first type of woman is what we call the God indifferent woman. This is a woman who does not care about what God cares about her, what God says about her. She doesn't know that God has a plan for her life. She doesn't know that God wants to use her. She doesn't know uh, the, the, the desires, the promises of God for her as a person. She doesn't care. She's indifferent to it. <laughs> She's indifferent to it. This woman depends on her beauty. She depends on her intelligence. She depends on her connections. She depends on her body. She depends, she depends on you know, um, all these external things. To, to meet her needs, to figure her way around, to get what she wants from men or what she does not want. You know, God is not a factor for her. That's the God indifferent woman. The next you know, category of women is the God desperate woman. Now, this is a woman who now knows that she needs God and she's desperate for God. She's waiting for God to rescue her. She needs God to meet her, uh, meet her needs. If, if, you know, or, or God rescue me from hunger, rescue me from sickness and disease, rescue me from bad relationships, rescue me from being single, rescue me from uh, 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 infertility, rescue me from uh, womb problems, from 
you know, all kinds of things. She needs God to rescue her, and she's desperate for God. Now, there's nothing wrong with needing God to help you, but there's something wrong with this, where, with, with packing your relationship with God at the place of desperation for his help. No, you, you can start there, but you mustn't pack there. Our relationship with God is more than, uh, God, help me do this. God, do this for me. God, do that for me. God, do this for me. God, do that for me. Uh, there's more to our relationship with God. And so the God-desperate woman is a needs-based woman. She needs God to help her, you know, sort out financial problems, you know. And she only comes to God for what she gets from God. She, 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 she doesn't know that there are some things that God needs her for. She only comes to God for what she gets from God. Uh, that's the God-desperate woman. And there's something wrong with ending your relationship with God, with, you know, uh, just begging him for things and just asking him for things. You need to go to the next level. The next level is what we call the God-dependent woman. The God-dependent woman. So this woman now knows that she needs God. And she's now learning to trust God. She's learning it. She's learning to depend on God. She's learning to make herself available to God, you know, every now and again. God, what can I do for you? Uh, what is needed in the church? Pastor, is there anything? You know, this is a, so this woman's relationship is beginning to grow beyond desperation. She's now coming to a place of depending on God. But the, 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 the growth of this woman is still coming. Her, her stature in the things of God is still developing. So at this place of God dependency, sometimes, you know, when <laughs> following God doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense to her, she doesn't follow. <laughs> when, when following God is difficult, she doesn't follow. She, she does what she wants to do. So there's still a measure of um, um, independence of God in her, there's still a measure of mistrust. Uh, is God going to come through? Is God not going to come through? Uh, maybe if he doesn't come through, maybe I'll make a plan for myself. And there are many people who are at this level, who make plans for themselves. You know, you're waiting for God to send you a life partner. He doesn't, you know, come through at the time you think he should come through. You make a plan for yourself. You go and get a man. However you get it. You know, you're no longer... You're not, you're not following his word anymore. You disobey his word because there are uh, reasons in your head that, that you know, push you to go get what you want, how you want it, when you want it. God's opinion does not count. That's the God-dependent God woman. So, so she hasn't gone to the next level. And many people's Christianity end at this level of, you know, I can read the Bible, I can pray, but if it conflicts with, you know, how I think things should go, I put God aside, I put the Bible aside, I use my sense, I use my wisdom. <laughs> I don't care what the word says, I care about the goals I want to achieve. So if the goals I want to achieve is not going according to uh, how God says, it must, then I leave God's way and I find my own way of doing it then that's, that's a, you know, um, the third level. Then the fourth level is what we call the God-sufficient woman. This is a woman who has learned to count on God and to depend on God and to trust God when it makes sense, when it doesn't make sense. The word of God is sufficient for her when it makes sense and when it doesn't make sense. When it adds up and when it doesn't add up. She just follows God. And a big example of a God-sufficient woman is Mary. The, the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. When an angel came and told her that God wants you to be the mother of the Messiah, she knew <laughs> that this was going to be ridiculous. How can you say to your parents and say to the people around you, I am pregnant by the Holy Spirit. God made me pregnant. People are not going to believe you. It doesn't make sense. There's no precedence. There's no precedence. It has not happened before. So how are you going to be able to explain this? But this she was willing. She said, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. So when it doesn't make sense and you still trust, 
When it doesn't make sense, you still believe God and his word. You still, you know, hold on to the word of God. You're still willing to obey God. You're not leaning on the arm of flesh. You're not switching out of God to try this or try that. The arm of flesh is not, is not your option. It's not an option at all. The arm of flesh is not an option. The word of God is your only option. And that's a God-sufficient woman. And then when you become God-sufficient, you prepare yourself to become God-dependable. So when, 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 when you prove that the word of God is sufficient for you, God can now depend on you. God can now count on you. God can trust you because he knows. He knows you will not violate his word. He knows you will not violate his wills, his will and his desire. All right. So, so we're not going to talk about the God-dependable woman. Uh, we want to unpack and understand God's sufficiency. Because it is God's sufficiency that becomes the platform to become God-dependable. Let me say that again. It is when you become God-sufficient that you are ready to be depended on by God. And I'm telling you, God is looking for people to depend on right now. So he's looking for God-sufficient women. Yes, God is looking for God-sufficient women. Women who believe his word. Women who stay with the word, who obey the word, who, who drink the word. God's sufficiency requires a certain level of intimacy. Yes, yes, yes. It takes intimacy to become God-sufficient. Uh, it, it's an intimacy that, 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 that helps you come to that place where you trust God. You know what's in his heart and you can trust him. If, you're not, if you don't have an intimate relationship with God, if, when there are demands being made on you uh, that, are, that are not easy, that are not easy, if you don't have enough relationship with God to trust him, you will default to the arm of flesh. Because your flesh is kicking. Your flesh is shouting. Your flesh is saying, but for a God-sufficient woman, the flesh is not an option. She has learned to crucify the flesh. She has learned to die to the flesh completely. Only the word of God. So when her fears, when her fears are raging, she knows how to pipe down the fears and cause those fears to be submitted to the word. The word of God said this, and I'm going to stay with the word. <laughs> the word says, my God shall supply all my needs. And I will stay with the word. Even when it doesn't make sense. When, when it looks like I will get into trouble by trusting in the word and, and staying on the word, I will, I will allow myself to get into trouble uh, because I trust God that he will rescue me. I trust God that he will come true. Hallelujah. So, so let me introduce another concept and um, you, you know, unpack it. This is what I call the God-sufficiency moment. A God-sufficient woman is a woman who has gone through many God's sufficiency moments and has trusted God in those moments. What's a God's sufficiency moment? A God's sufficiency moment is a moment that requires you to express and display your trust in the word of God and go against your senses, go against the things that everybody else is saying and you will go only by the word. So, so a God's sufficiency moment demands that you do sometimes some crazy things that don't make sense to the, to the logical mind. And, and because God's word says so, so you go with it. It doesn't make sense. I, I give you an example of God's sufficiency moments in scriptures. God tells uh, the children of Israel to walk around the wall of Jericho six days, six times in six days. And on the seventh day, go around it six times. And then on the seventh time, make a shout. <laughs> That's a God's sufficiency moment. you got to trust God to, to do such a stupid thing. I mean, how, how do you walk around walls and, and bring the walls down? It doesn't make sense. But, but a God's sufficiency moment it requires trust in God. In other words, God, your word is sufficient for me. It, whether it makes sense or not, I'm going to obey it. It, okay, another God sufficiency moment was when uh, uh, Jesus told Peter to, uh, you know, uh, 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 trust your, go, go into the deep, launch out into the deep, 
and let down your net for a catch in Luke chapter 5. Now, the whole night, Peter had, you know, um, scooped that whole water and they didn't catch anything. The whole night had been completely futile, no results. And here comes Jesus saying, launch out into the deep, let down your net. And Peter, at that moment, Peter did the right thing. Peter engaged that God's sufficiency moment. He said, we toyed all night and we caught nothing. But at your word, at your word, at your word, I will lend down the net. So even though experience says there's no fish here, but your words, you are telling me now to obey your word, I will obey it. I will, I will drop my experience. My experience tells me things like this don't work. We have tried it before, it didn't work. But because your word says, do it now, I will do it. That's, that's a God sufficiency moment. The word of God was sufficient for Peter. It was sufficient for Peter. He, he trusted the word and cast down experience. And cast down experience. You know, there are many times experience will say, oh, you've tried it like this, tried it like this. But a God sufficiency moment, a prophetic word comes to you. An instruction comes to you that defies your experience. That tells you that you should throw that experience away and trust the word of God. And I, we said, or let me say it now. Every time that God wants to launch you into a higher level of working with him, he would make you go through a God sufficiency moment. What you do with that God sufficiency moment will determine whether you will go higher or you remain where you were. Are you going to trust God and say no to that temptation? And say no to going with your flesh with that temptation? The offer is so tempting, but your spirit, the word of God you know, says don't do it. That's a God sufficiency moment. Are you going to count on God and go with what God says, or are you going to go with what your eyes say? You know, that, 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 that's a God sufficiency moment. When your flesh is pulling you in this direction, and the word of God and the nudgings of the spirit is pulling you in another direction, and you choose to go with the pullings of the Spirit. Jesus in Gethsemane, that was a God sufficiency moment. When, when his flesh said, ah, you can't go through this cross. You can't go through it. The pain is going to be unbearable. The pain, the, the pain is going to be unbearable. And in fact, you may not survive it. You may be abandoned in hell. Hallelujah. And Jesus remembered the word of God that said, you will not abandon my soul in hell. He remembered that word and he chose to believe that word. And he, and he said, not my will, but your will be done. So that was a God sufficiency moment. And he passed it. He passed it. And, and when he passed it, he was catapulted to the next level. So today, I want to ask you, are you going to pass the, the God sufficiency moment test and trust God? And trust God and hold on to his word. Or are you going to go with your senses? Are you going to go with your, with your reasoning? Are you going to go with what your mind tells you? Or what your neighbors tell you? Or what your friends are telling you? Or are you going to go with what the word of God says? That's, that's God's sufficiency moment. Make a God's sufficient woman. So, so Mary faced a God's sufficiency moment. When that angel said... You will not get married to a man. You will not have relations with a man, but you are going to fall pregnant. And, you know, a lot of things were going on in her head. She was already engaged to be married. <laughs> and, you know, if she didn't have a man, it might even have been a lot easier. She now, you know, has a, a relationship. She's engaged to be married. And now they are coming with this kind of proposal. So what is the man going to say? At this point in time, you know, she could have said to the angel, let me consult with Joseph and see if Joseph will agree to this plan. If he doesn't agree, then I will not be able to do it. At that moment, she would have failed a God sufficiency test, a God sufficiency moment test. But she didn't, she didn't uh, go that route. She said to the angel, be it unto me, according to your word. If your word is that I will go through this, I know I trust you to help me go through it. 
I trust you to help me go through it. I trust you to, to stand with me. And, and whatever that comes out of this decision, you will see me through. You will see me through. I trust you. I, I leave my life in your hands. The, the, that's what Jesus did on the cross. Um, I mean, in Gethsemane, before he went to the cross, he says, unto you I commit my spirit. He, I, I trust you. That he said that on the cross, actually. Unto you I commit my spirit. I, I don't know what's going to happen in hell, but I trust you to protect me. I trust you to bring me out. I trust you to quicken my body and raise me from the dead. I trust you. I commit my whole self into your hands. I trust in your word. Your word says you are able to do what you have promised. Your word says you will fulfill your word. Your word says you will keep your promise, and I'm going to hold on to that word. You will, you will keep your promise. You will deliver me. You will rescue me. You will heal me. You will promote me. You will, you will do whatever. I am turning down this offer. I am turning down this opportunity. I am going to stay true to your word. A God sufficiency moment was when uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, if you want to heat up the fire, that's, that's your problem. We are not going to bow to this king, this idol. If you want to throw us into the fire, we trust God that he will save us. Even if it doesn't save us, we will, we will go through the fire. <laughs> we trust God. We, 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 I don't know how we are going to do it, but we trust God. But we are not going to bow down to this thing. That's a God sufficiency moment. And when they trusted God on that, on, on that moment, God came through. The Bible tells us that there was a fourth man in the fire. <laughs> there was a fourth man in the fire because they chose to go with God. You know, many people have had God's sufficiency moment and they squandered it. Somebody is asking you to do something that you know you're not supposed to do. Are you going to say yes to God and say no to the man and say no to his proposal and say no to, to his offer? And stay and continue the, 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 the lonely and uh, um, um, miserable, miserable in quote, you know, journey, path, path that you are following. Because God says follow that path. Or are you going to go with what this man is offering? You know, Daniel had a God sufficiency moment. When they were presenting all this food, rich food, on the, on, from the king's table. And he says, no, 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 no. I will not defile myself with that food anymore. I am going to, I'm going to stay true to, to my vow. I'm going to stay true to God's word. I will not defile myself with food offered to idols. No, no, no. I will, I will trust God to eat vegetables. And he made up his mind not to do the defiling thing. So this is, this is, you know, the decision that everybody faces. Everybody faces. When Satan puts pressure, puts pressure, and, and circumstances put pressure for you to compromise, for you to engage the flesh, for you to engage in ways that are not pleasing to God. Will you trust him? Will you trust him? God wants us to trust him to go through those God's sufficiency moments. You, you will not drown in the sea. No, you will not drown in the sea. You will, you, will, you will see God make a way in the highway. I mean, make a highway in the sea and bring you on the other side. So you may be listening to me today and there are some decisions, some tough decisions. There are some, some um, 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 difficult circumstances that you are facing. I want you to count on God's word and stay with God's word. Stay with God's word and, and say, God, your word is sufficient for me. Your word says you will come through. So I'm going to believe your word that you will come through for me. I'm going to trust your word that you will come through for me. Yes, I, it may not make sense. It may, it may be painful physically. It may be painful emotionally. It may be painful financially. But I am going to trust your word. I am not going to compromise. I am not going, I'm going to reject this offer. I'm going to remain broke than accept this help that has uh, strings attached to it. I'm going to, no, no, I'm going to say no to this offer and stay true to my God and my convictions of what a Christian woman is supposed to do than go with the compromise, it, it will not be easy. It will not be easy. I, I will refuse to go into worry. Yes, I will refuse to go into fretting. Yes, I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to, I will stay true to the word. And I will trust God's word. I will encourage myself in, in the Lord. 
Even when I find myself about to waver, I will catch myself. I will, you know, recommit. I will, I will, I will speak the word. I will stay with the word. I will obey God. And I will see his salvation come through for me. Where I look to the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. A God-sufficient woman, my help only comes from God. You only receive help from God. Not from man, not from Egypt, not from Babylon, but from hell. From help from God alone. As I, as I, as I round up tonight's contemplation, a God-sufficient woman has a deep enough intimacy with the Spirit of God that she is able to represent God. When she shows up, God has shown up because God identifies with her as much as she identifies with God. Let me say that again. God identifies with her as much as she identifies with God. She identifies with God as much as God identifies with her. She and God have become so tight. They become so, so one together that when God shows up, she shows up. When God, when she shows up, God shows up. In other words, she's a carrier of divine presence. She's a carrier of divine mandate. She knows the will of God and she's willing to obey it even when it doesn't make sense, even when it's difficult. She knows what God wants and she's willing to obey. She's willing to go to difficult places. She's willing to endure excruciating sacrifice because this is what God wants. She's willing to do whatever God is asking. It doesn't matter what it costs her. You know, you know, you know, it's like uh, Abraham having to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. That's a difficult decision. But God wanted it. He gave it to God. That's a God's sufficiency moment. You know, Peter being asked to walk on water. It's comfortable in the boat. There's no danger in the boat. And you step out of the boat and step into a storm and start walking on it. But that's a God's sufficiency moment. And there are many of those moments, if you are willing to step out on water, spirit are willing to step out on the word, on the word. You know, the word of God tells you, senses tell you, stay in the boat. The word says, walk on water. Are you going to stay in the boat or are you going to walk on water? Many people have, have remained in the place where they have been for years because they are afraid to step out on the word of God. They are afraid to step out on thus say the Lord. The comfort of the, of the, of the salary of the salary job is so, is so comfortable that they are not willing to step out to bet the business. They are not willing to resign on the job and trust God when they don't know where money is going to come from to obey God. It, so they have remained in their comfort zone. There are many people who have remained in their comfort zone because they are not willing to take on those God sufficiency moments. If you are going to experience big things, if God is going to do big things, great things in your life, you will have those God sufficiency moments where you, your sufficiency is of God, where you trust God. And I'm, I'm throwing it to you today. May you pass your God sufficiency moment test. May you pass those seasons where only faith in God and trusting in his word will see you through. God bless you. God bless you. I hope I helped you. I hope I'm encouraging you. I hope I've encouraged you rather to trust God and pass the next test that is in front of you. And, and, and scale to the next level of your walk with God. God bless you. I will continue next week as we continue to unpack uh, this God sufficiency woman uh, subject. God bless you. Good night. Bye-bye. The Power of Women Academy is a group mentoring program for high-impact women. Women who want to change their lives and their worlds and move on to the next level. Power of Woman Academy is aimed and tailored at unleashing the passion and greatness locked inside you as a woman as you walk the journey of life over the mentorship period with our team of distinguished and well-accomplished mentors from all walks of life. Our mentors are indeed destiny helpers. These mentors come to inspire you. They come to encourage you, to challenge you, to teach you, to stretch you and to empower you. They are committed to helping you fulfill your highest potential and help you birth your wildest dreams that have been placed in you by God. For more information about the Power of Women Academy, please visit www.powacademy.co.za or for inquiries, call 064 200